Why do you think the demerger is the less favourable position for Australia? Look, the demerger is uh, designed to separate the company in half, to put the uh, fossil fuel assets, the emission generating assets into a vehicle. It's designed to not survive. That will create a very bad situation for the workers. The demerger plan does ha has no sort of that I've seen so far, plans for them. Um, I think for the shareholders, it will result in two entities that have a less total value. I, I don't believe it will increase value for shareholders at all. And that entity has no ability really, realistically to transform itself, I believe, in terms of actually changing. So it'll lock in what it's doing as long as it can survive. A lot of things that need to be handled very carefully. I just think that the whole, the whole structure is uh, legally and purposefully designed to move away from the difficult issue rather than actually tackling it and, and trying to solve it and transition it. I suggest over the next eight years, we will see many more announcements, many more uh, renewable projects coming online, much more transmission. All of this stuff will precipitate a change. That there is no way those current dates and times of those plants will be anywhere near what they say. You can rerun this footage in eight years time. I'll be very, very surprised if those things are still running because it just won't be economic. So then again, you can put your head in the sand, you can produce some numbers that say it'll run longer. Um, you know, lots of consultants out there will give you lots of numbers, but the mainline, mainstream view, most economists, energy watchers, you know, AMO, everyone else that did come out, the regulator, it, it's, you know, the current plan is let's put our head in the sand for a little while and hope it goes away. It's not going away. The debate with the government, between the government and AGL, has been going on now for since 2015 um, and has not stopped. And um, but equally, there's been similar debates with the other owners of the coal-fired power stations. And I don't think it's going to, it is going to stop. We're going to see this sort of fight. Um, the government's view as to how this should, how this industry should transition from one, which has got a fundamentally particular characteristic of the way electricity is produced, to one that is fundamentally different, and yet the consumer is still just using electricity. And so there's this sort of battle going on behind the scenes as to how all our electricity is going to be produced, which is not particularly edifying. Uh, and yet the consumer is sort of saying, what the hell is all this about? So I think that, um, in terms of the way it plays out for votes, then becomes the important issue. And the government feels that it needs to demonstrate, for example, that it wants to protect jobs, when of course it's not going to protect jobs, because the jobs are going to go anyway. Mike Cannon-Brooks argues that the transition will in fact create more jobs. Do you agree with him? If we do it right, uh, yes. The um, renewable energy itself, uh, once it, the, the construction, like most things, creates lots of jobs, but once it's settled down, then there's not many jobs in that activity. But Australia, globally, has a very unusual comparative advantage. We're a very large country with a very small population, relatively, and a huge wind and solar resource. We don't have the domestic economy at the moment to use all that energy. What's the best thing to do with it? Export it. Now, are we better off exporting that as energy, like, for example, electricity, as Mike Cannon-Brooks is proposing to do, or are we better off turning that renewable energy into something else using our mineral resources, which, again, which we have an unusually high, uh, un almost unfair advantage, in a sense, of how much mineral resources we've got. Can we combine our renewable energy resource with our mineral resource and add real value in a way that would then replace the jobs in spades. It makes economic sense, regardless of what the government tries to do. And those jobs would be in the regions, which as the Treasurer said the other night, is critical for Australia's economy. So you can't, it's difficult to see why that's not something worth fighting for, because it's an enormous opportunity. And um, we don't want to find ourselves in 20 or 30 years time wondering what the hell happened. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week.
And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.